so we it's have a common hold up <clears throat> so german girl in america i was waiting for her to do something like this this is going to be very interesting crazy german law six surprising things that are forbidden in germany german girl in america so for those that don't know german girl in america is she goes by feely she was she's from she's from munich germany i mean she'll t she'll say that in the beginning of the video very, 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 very informative um, on the culture and stuff, traditions and th the do's and don'ts of going and even like speaking the language and stuff like that. So I would say like creme la creme, um, amazing, absolutely amazing. So uh, we about to we about to check this thing out. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. If you guys are returning viewers, welcome back. If you guys are wondering why I'm doing this intro, it's because uh, this is for my YouTube peoples. Um, very, very, very awesome individual, and I look forward to her videos. I actually watch them a lot of my free time because um, I learned some stuff I never knew before, and I'm like, dang. I mean, I've been diving into the German thing for a hot minute. I've never been to Germany, but this is pretty cool. I will be doing a collaboration with another YouTuber, uh, by the way, uh, in the next, I want to say, couple months. I'm trying to be out in Germany this December, so I'm going to try to collaborate with Shady Shea. I'm not sure if you guys know who he is, but you will know who he is uh, come December if I'm able to get approved to go to Germany. So, anyways, that's the long of the short. Let's get to this thing and see what is going on here. Low skits. It's common in the U.S., but illegal in Germany? Guns. I know. Yeah. Here are six crazy German laws that you should know about. Let's go. I like this intro. I remember her old intro and stuff. This is pretty cool. I'm not sure we made it, but this is dope. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. Now, whenever people here in the US find out that I'm German, they usually ask me a bunch of questions. And one thing that I get asked a lot is if Germans are really as obsessed with <laughs> rules and laws as they're often portrayed. I, from just talking to a lot of y'all on Discord, it seems like it's, I would say more so yes than no, you know? Because America, it's more common for people to just not care about all, most of the laws, most of the laws, you know what I mean? Um, but I feel like it's probably more common in Germany to follow the laws to a T. You know, if it's they're there for a reason, cool. Now, not to say everybody follows them, but I, I would say there is a higher percentage of people in Germany that are law-abiding citizens than America, if that makes sense, from what I've observed. And I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, just call me out. Be like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> um, Anya says, like, yeah, we're really into laws. Okay, so yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't too far off with that statement. I'm pretty, pretty hype about what I just said. And then. my answer is usually... Not every single German loves rules, of course, but Most, yes. Yeah. Overall, following rules is definitely something that is valued a lot in Germany. And Germans like to have regulations and laws for almost everything. That's However, cool. some of those laws can be really surprising and funny. And that's why today I'll tell you guys about six crazy German laws. Mm. Now, of course, I'm not going to make you read any long, complicated, wordy laws in German in this video. But if you wanted to be able to read and understand those laws, I would recommend learning German on Babbel, which is today's sponsor. Hey, I actually use that on my channel. If you guys want to see me do my little lesson thing from time to time, it's for me. I know like watching me learn German is, is pretty boring. I, I understand. But in, if you if you're genuinely interested in watching me learn through Babbel, I actually go through all the lessons and stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. So I know she's about to go through the promo here. Uh, long story short, Bobble is pretty cool. I use it. I actually use it on my channel as like a video series kind of thing. Um, the series doesn't have a name. It's just me doing stuff on Bobble. It's very, very useful. I think Bobble is great for um, explaining the sentence structure and um, conjugations of words and stuff like that and why they are the way they are. And then I feel like Duolingo introduces you to a lot of new words and scenarios and stuff. So they kind of go hand in hand. And then, of course, you could always just join my Discord and, you know, speak with actual German people because that also helps too, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, law number one, it's illegal to run out of fuel on the Autobahn. As most of you probably know, the Autobahn... Oh, so why do I not have a Bobble sponsorship? I don't know. To be honest, man, I do get hit up a lot from sponsors. I just don't believe in sponsors, man. It's too much work. It is. Even though it's not, I just have to. Like, so what she did, she did like a one minute promo 
maybe a minute 30 second promo which is something i could do but it's just too much because for a bobble right i have to like it would be easier if there was an easier way to transfer the money right because on the business side of things I have to send them some sort of wire thing, right? And my bank is real weird about giving me the information to send over to the sponsors so I can get the money wired to my bank account. It's just, it's like a tug of war that I don't have time for. So I'm like, whatever. Honestly, I just rather like, I'll put four or five ads in a video on YouTube and that's good enough for me. I'm not living off of YouTube money. I, I use it to save up for trips that I'm going to make uh, to Germany and um, maybe to upgrade a couple pieces of equipment, but yeah, I know it sounds kind of crazy. I'm all over the place, but just to let you guys know, I've I've had this conversation before, but I've I've just been really lazy when it comes to sponsors. So I, I'd rather not promote people. So when people do ask for promotions, I charge a lot because if I have to go out of my way to like do the promos, oh man, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> is Germany's interstate system. If you want to learn more about it, you can check out these two videos. And when it comes to driving, there are indeed a lot of regulations that you have to follow as a driver in Germany. Like your car has to pass inspections every two years, oh, called shit. TÜV, otherwise you're not allowed to drive on the streets. Um, you also have to have certain equipment like a first aid kit and warning vests in your car. And in the winter, it's mandatory to have winter tires on your car. Well, I'm not sure if that's mandatory here, though. It's, I wonder if it's mandatory, because I know Chicago, I'm pretty sure if you had to, hmm. I, I wasn't sure if it was recommended or if it was mandatory, but I know in Germany, which from what she said, that it's obviously mandatory, but I'm trying to think if, there, if there's like states like that here where it's mandatory to have winter tires. I know like, hmm, uh, maybe it's just encouraged. It's probably highly encouraged to get them. And yes, you're also <laughs> obligated to always have enough gas in your tank as a driver. Yeah, and if you I've, don't and actually run out of gas on the Autobahn, you're done, bro. Literally, like you're either dead or you're in jail. Because if you run out of gas on the Autobahn and you got people going 360 kilometers and cotton ha, you know what I'm saying? Cotton ha, you will be turned into pixie dust. And everybody behind you will be turned into pixie dust too. Because, I mean, time stops for no one. Law of inertia, like an object, an object in motion will stay in motion until uh, acted upon by an un something something force. You know what I'm saying? So it's <laughs> goddamn. You can be fined and might have to pay twenty five up to one hundred and twenty euros. Listen, I would rather pay twenty five to one hundred and twenty five euros than turn into a memory, bro. So honestly, if you don't die on that autobahn for running out of gas. Just be grateful for every single breath you inhale from that point going forward into whatever your life stops because that is lucky. That is very lucky. Since this is considered preventable. And in general, it's also illegal to stop or park on the Autobahn, even in the emergency lane. I mean, oh, unless your true. vehicle is actually breaking down, but even then, you won't see a lot of cars just left there on the side of the Autobahn. True. Whereas in the US, you regularly see broken down vehicles on the side of the That shit pisses me off, bro. Listen, so I'm in Florida, right? The one thing I will literally never get used to. And she's, yo, I'm glad she brought this up. The one thing I will never get used to, bro, never, is when I'm driving home on the fucking highway, on the right side of the road, there's these cars with their lights turned off, parked on the side of the goddamn highway, of the highway. So if I'm trying to like move on over to the right lane at nighttime when it's dark and there's no lights outside besides my headlights, I don't see the car parked on the side of the road until I'm like three feet away from it. That's not a lot of space to move out of the way. And what's even more messed up is these cars park halfway in the right side of the highway the road like they're in the middle of the road and it's so scary bro it is so scary i hate it i absolutely hate it they sh that should be illegal it should be illegal but it's not apparently because people do it all the time and come to think of it there's a tree line that's right next to my uh to my my house or like i i guess there's a tree line leading all the way to my house right there's like a big ass forest so when you're driving down this highway there's forest on either side so they're probably parking on the side of the road to go hunting but still bro park in the grass not in the fucking road bro it's so tilting it's so tilting
the interstate that were just basically parked there. And of yeah. course, since most places in the US don't use radar traps to enforce speed limits, but have cops pull people over instead, you'll often also see a car that was pulled over and also a cop car behind it yeah. in the emergency lane as well. On the German Autobahn, that would actually be considered jeopardizing the road safety, especially since on many parts of the Autobahn, there is no speed limit, so people are going crazy fast. Yes, oh my lord. Fun fact, apparently this also became illegal in a small town here in Ohio earlier this year in Youngstown, which is close to Cleveland. So don't do it there. Hold on. How could you be given a ticket and find hundreds for running out of few ass sure. either? Number two, it's not allowed to name your baby Superman. But what if I want to? <laughs> now this one isn't technically a law and you won't get fined for this, but fact is, and this is usually hard to believe for Americans, that in Germany you can't just give your baby any name you want. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad Germany, the, the, the laws Germany has, they're not unreasonable laws. They're laws that pre prevent you from doing some dumbass shit. Like, it's like, hey, I want to name my, my baby Hennessy Bottle. The German hospital go look at you like you lost your damn mind, but like... What did you say? Get his crazy ass out the hospital and take him to a therapist or something. And when you get your damn mind right, come back and then name the child. Because we're not letting you do that to that baby. Get out of here. Okay? Because no. 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 What is wrong with y'all? We have people here that name their kids crazy shit, bro. Like, listen. There is a person I, I actually know whose name is Cinnamon. Cinnamon. That sounds like a stripper name, bro. That's how they, they work in poles and stuff. Who names their kid Cinnamon? Who names their kid Hennessy? Who names their kid Vodka? We need laws like that here, man. Freedom of speech. We got we to gotta modify that shit because we going a little too crazy out here, man. It'll have to be approved by the local Standesamt, like the civil registration office. And there are rules as to what you can and can't name your kid. Thank God, man. America needs to adopt that shit because we are not. Mm -mm. I mean, of course there are rules for that. It's Germany. We pretty much have a rule for everything. Now, whether the name you picked for your baby will be approved or not depends on different things, such as whether it's a name that actually exists, whether it'll be a reason for bullying later on in the child's life. True, bro. Chief Keef named his kid after a mixtape that he dropped. I was like, what the hell? I think one of his things was, was like something Cozart. It was like Cash Money Cozart or something like that. And so he named one of his kids. He has 10 kids. So one of them is like Cash Money Cozart. And I was like, bro. I feel like we're going to get to the point in America where we're naming our kids like based off of usernames and stuff. Like, hey, man, I just had my son. His name is Wizard Hunter 69. Such a good kid, man. Wizard Hunter 69, come here, man. <laughs> I call him Wiz. But yeah, his middle name is uh, um, I'm the only one. So Wizard Hunter 16. Wizard Hunter 69, I'm the only one, Bray. You know what I'm saying? Yo, thank you so much, Toby, for the resub. Really means a lot, bro. So crazy, man. <laughs> And sometimes they also don't accept names that aren't obviously a female or a male name, which this last one is kind of ridiculous if you ask me. Oh, okay. Here are just some examples of names that have been rejected before. Ouch. Waldmeister, Junge. Junge. <laughs> oh, Junge. Which just means boy. Yeah. Rosenherz, so Roseheart. Oh, that's not like Rosenherz. Sounds like a like it doesn't sound like a proper noun rosenherz that could be an interesting name they would let that slide here beer stubel what the fuck beer stube so kind of like a beer pub what the fuck satan yo i have an honest question and this is no like this is no jokes like isn't the dictator that was you know in germany like, you can't name your kid Hitler, right? You can't name your kid Hitler. I'm pretty sure that's outlawed. Like, that not that, like, a thing? Like, you can't... Like, that, that's that got to be... Like, they're not going to let you name your kid, even if it's, like, a boy. They're not going to let you name that. They're not going to let you name it, right? Right? Like, I mean, let me know. I'm I'm being a thousand percent real right now because there are people... Y'all, y'all, there's an AFD. There's an NPD. So, I'm not... I'm just saying people probably have tried it before, Right? 
Hitler was the last name. Just wait for it. It's in the video. It's in the video. Oh, shit. Okay. Or Satan in German. McDonald's. Superman. Pain. Pain. Gucci. Whiskey. Or the last names of politicians like Schröder, which was Germany's chancellor before Merkel, or Lenin. Wait a minute. Why not? Why could you name your kid Schröder? I, we, so it's funny if you see how this is spelled without the umlaut. We have a guy in my in my one of my work centers that it, we call him Schroeder, and it's actually spelled the, this exact same way. Funny. And since I already see all these question marks pop up in your guys' eyes, no, you won't be able to call your kid Hitler. Damn, she already knew what was on all of our minds. I oh my god. Well, I'm glad that was cleared up. I'm glad that was cleared up. See, she's on point, man. She's on point, bro. Either. Even though the first name Adolf is technically allowed. Really? These rules are one of the reasons why you won't find a lot of crazy first names in Germany. Cool. And also why Germans are often very fascinated by what American celebrities name their kids. Yes. Oh, my God. Imagine naming your kid Bacardi Rum Crack. Yeah, my kid named Bacardi Rum Crack. Hey, Bacardi Rum Crack, get your one over here. Like, yo, crazy dog. Like, we got some wild ass names. Yeah, she's smart. Number three, she's smart. Deny the Holocaust. I heard about this. I did hear about this. This is interesting. Hey! And I'm going to make this political, man. We're, we're getting political over here. Who thinks that we should have the same law about slavery in the U.S.? Because there are people that actually deny the fact that slavery existed in the U.S. I like the fact that this is a law right here in Germany. It's illegal to deny the Holocaust. You can't deny that the Holocaust happened. I feel like there should be a law where you cannot deny that slavery happened. Because I feel like America has this weird, twisted mentality of... Um, you know, pa painting the country as a perfect, flawless country, when in fact we are the most flawed country. We just have a lot of tanks and, and, and glizzies. So people can try to correct us, but unless you got more weapons than us and a better strategy than us, we ain't gonna listen. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we should have a, um, a law that makes it illegal for us to deny slavery. Did you guys know that as of last year was the first year that they made lynching illegal? They recognized lynching as a federal crime last year. If you guys don't know what lynching is, it's being hung with by a noose from like a tree or something. They just made that illegal last year. Why the fuck was that not a thing a hundred years ago? Isn't that insane? That's so insane. Because there were people being lynched literally a few years ago. Like recently, this year, this year, last year, year before, year before that, they they never recognized it as a crime. And I wonder why. I wonder why. But hey, like I said, I'm just calling it like I see it. It's crazy. Now, this one doesn't necessarily fit into a list of crazy or funny laws because I think it's neither of those. However, many people from outside of Germany and outside of Europe aren't aware of this and find it a very interesting law when they first hear about it. It's illegal in Germany to deny the Holocaust. So you can't just say that the crimes of the Holocaust didn't happen. If you do, you can either get fined for it or you can actually get prison time of up to five years. Now Let's go. We need the same thing in America. I'm making a video on this. I am making a video on this and it's going to trigger a lot of people. But I believe that this should be a law. I believe this should be a law. I've read many comments on the Internet saying that this indicates that Germany doesn't have freedom of speech. <laughs> well, that's not true. We do have freedom of speech, Meinungsfreiheit as a fundamental right right in Germany. However, yo, hey, thank you so much. Zox, thank you so much for the uh uh for the oh, tier yeah. 1 sub, man. And Sava, holy shit, it's been a minute, bro. Sava built different. It's been a long time. What's up, my guy? 
freedom of speech can be limited by other general laws. Yes. By provisions for the protection of young persons, Jugendschutzgesetz, and another person's right to personal honor. Those general laws, which are like the first example of what can limit your freedom of speech, mm. cannot be laws that just discriminate against one specific opinion. They have to be neutral and they have to protect another legal right. Let's In go. this case, the right that they're protecting is the dignity of the Holocaust victims and their families. Absolutely. Which is something that we Amen. Amen. Yo, I'm glad she yo, I'm glad she made this video. I am so glad she made this video. I'm serious. I'm very glad she made this video because we need something like this. <laughs> we need something like this. Why why can't America like why can't we get with the program? This is oh my god. This is insane. Wow. value very very highly in germany because after world war ii when the federal republic of germany was founded the very first pair oh dang sava i got you bro i'll definitely hit you up man after the stream and we'll we'll, we'll 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 talk it out man that's crazy you gotta update me on what's been going on with your life my guy graph off our constitution the grundgesetz became human dignity shall be inviolable to respect and protect it shall be the duty of all state authority. Makes so that's sense. why denying the Holocaust is illegal in Germany, even though we do have freedom of speech, and it's also illegal in 16 other countries. Hmm. Number four, it's forbidden to mow the lawn on Sundays or play piano at midnight. And of course, we've covered this, like, how many times in this channel? I want to say at least 13 or 14 times, because there's, like, you know, Weird laws in Germany and everybody's done that. So I know exactly why. Sundays are typically the quiet days and stuff like that. Obviously, if you make noise and stuff, then boom. Um, you can get a noise complaint, a fine up to however much. She's about to go into that. But that's definitely one of the most common rules I've heard. Also, too, I think it's illegal to have an urn in your house. And as she covers that, that's another interesting one, too. I wonder if she has more information on that. Germans like silence. This is something you'll notice if you're ever in Germany, especially if you come from a louder culture like the American one. Germans tend to speak pretty quietly, especially in public. And we also appreciate having some peace and quiet at home, which is why there are tons of laws and regulations about how much noise you're allowed to make. You know what? I might need to live in a rural area. I mean, or a city. I, that's why I said, like, if I could live in anywhere in, in um in Germany, it would be Berlin because I'm a loud person. If you all see me, if you see how I react in videos, imagine how loud I am in person, bro. I am loud as freak. Like, bro, my ex-wife hated me because I would be up at three in the morning screaming at my computer. Hated me, bro. Like, why do you think she's my ex-wife? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and when. Sundays and public holidays have actually been defined as rest periods, Ruhezeiten, for the whole day, which means that you're not allowed to make loud noises that could disturb others. This includes mowing your lawn or using a drilling machine, for example. So if you were trying to do some renovations at home, not on Sundays. Damn. This also applies to nighttime rest periods, which usually start at 8 p.m. and sometimes even to lunch hours. The rules for the lunch hours usually vary though, depending on where in Germany you live, and some rules will even be made by the house management of your apartment building. The Federal High Court of Justice has even ruled that playing an instrument in rental apartments is only allowed at certain times, from 8 a.m. to noon and from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. I wonder if you play like the, your instrument at 1 p.m. and stuff, like like, it's weird for somebody to file a noise complaint during the day of all times, right? I could understand noise complaints early in the morning or at night, but during the day, people would really complain about noise during the day. What the fuck? I, I think that's just weird, but it's, it's you know it is what it is. And even then, you can only practice for a certain amount of time. Piano players only get up to two hours per day, and drummers, for example, get 45 minutes in the summer and 90 minutes in the winter. Yes, German laws are very specific. Yeah, that's number five. Pretty it's crazy. It's not allowed to keep. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Yo, listen, bro. That's how you know I've been reacting to German stuff for way too goddamn long, bro. I literally have. I told you 13 or 14 videos specifically about German laws, at least. I have on my channel almost 4,000 videos, and I want to say 2,000 of those videos are German related. 2,000 videos German related. So I've reacted to pretty much almost every major person who has been in the community in Germany that's made content, and I've learned a lot. Like, my, my head is like blown by how much stuff I have learned from Germany. Um, and this is one of the this is one of the main ones. So I want to see what she says about this, man, because 
people kind of touch on this one a little bit, and I've heard that it's it's forbidden to keep urns at home. I wonder why though. Hmm. I always said too, if I ever got cremated and put in an urn during my funeral, I want my urn, my ashes put in like a cake or something. And while people are like reading off my obituary and shit like that, it's like, oh, by the way, you guys are consuming him right now. And they're like, <laughs> and the cake slices. I mean, one of the most lit cake y'all ever taste in your life, man. Burns at home. This topic doesn't really come up a lot in conversations in everyday life, the of the unfortunately. Dead, but the Germans among you may have wondered about this when watching American movies before, because in the US, it's pretty common that after a loved one dies, you take the urn home with you. I've definitely seen this in movies and shows before. True, true. I mean, if you go over to a lot of people's grandma house and stuff, like they literally got like an urn chilling somewhere in the living room, bro, of all places. I mean, imagine like you know, accidentally stumbling and knocking over an urn and all the dust just flies all over the place and all of a sudden you see memories and, 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 ooh, oh my God, this is, yeah, I, I feel like that's a reasonable law. That's a reasonable law. It's a weird law, but that is definitely a weird law, but it's, it, it's reasonable. Where either it's part of a comedic moment because someone doesn't realize that it's an urn or, of course, it's part of a drama. Well, that's something that you won't ever see in Germany because we have a law called Friedhofszwang, cemetery compulsion, that says that any mortal remains have to be buried at a cemetery or alternatively after a cremation, you can have a sea burial in Germany as well. Now, Damn. Wait a minute, you can have a sea burial? I'm gonna go back. She says you, you can, right? Compulsion that says that any mortal remains have to be buried at a cemetery or alternatively, after a cremation, you can have a sea burial. That's cool. Just dumping the, the, the ashes in the sea. That's dope. That's why I don't be drinking seawater, bro. Imagine how many people's urns have been dunked in that shit. So you, you literally drinking the souls of people that have died in the water and like other things like, oh my God. Has it ever crossed your mind? Whenever we drink filtered water from like the ocean or the sea or something, somebody's urns or somebody's remains are probably in there. We're probably drinking human. That's probably why the water tastes so sweet sometimes. Hmm. It's a morbid thought. Welcome to the Brain Gain channel. In Germany as well. Now, in the past few years, the rules have been lifted a little in different states. In Bremen, for example, it's now allowed to spread ashes on privately owned property, but you're still not allowed to take the urn home with you. In general, there's pretty big differences when it comes to funerals and cemeteries in Germany and the US. I've actually had the topic on my list for- My water is sweet. Yeah, the water out here is sweet, my guy. It's because it's probably filled with like cancerous whatever particles. Like the, our, our filtration systems out here are uh, not the best. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are familiar with Flint, Michigan. If you guys aren't, you should look it up. The water's so bad, dog. You could probably fill it up in your car and actually get your car to start. <laughs> it's pretty bad, bro. For a while, so let me know if you'd want me to talk about that more in depth at some point. Please, bit uh. And number six, you'll be punished for saying do to a cop. I heard about this too, man. If you call a cop, so Z and do, right? I have a problem, dog. I don't feel comfortable talking to older people in Germany because I feel like I have a, I literally don't know how to talk very proper, proper in, in German. I mean, my German's already messed up, but I feel like it's very conversational. And the downside of the way that I've been learning German is I've been only learning the do, um, forms of how i speak with people like i don't do the whole sprechen sie deutsch you know what i'm saying like i'd be like uh kannst du deutsch sprechen or you know what i'm saying like shit like that i if i say that to like a cop bro well i'm already dark so you, you pretty much you can you can kind of assume what happens after that <laughs> okay those of you who speak german probably understand this law right away but for everyone else Du is the German word for you. Mm -hmm. Now, why would that be a problem if you use that with a cop? Because in German, just like in other languages like French or Spanish, we have a formal and an informal address. Yep. So depending on what relationship you have with the person you're talking to, you'll use a different pronoun and also a different grammar structure when you talk to them. Amen. Du is the informal pronoun for you, while capital Z is the formal one. The formal one is usually used with people who are significantly older. Or more important. So I honestly, I actually, me and her did, t we talked about this actually, the the do and the z thing. She said that she actually got, uh, it's it's weird. Some people can use do in like an insulting way too. Cause like, 
I mean, everybody in Germany knows like the do and the Z thing. Now, most people are comfortable with using do because it's like, you know, do it. It's like, it's more like a, you should feel younger. You know what I mean? But I think one of the stories she told was uh, someone, I think she walked into the store and she was like filming or something like that. And um, they were telling, the lady was telling her like she couldn't film in the store and addressed her using do, you know what I mean? But like really, just really nasty, like like tone and whatever. And she's like, what the heck? So of course she said something back. She's like, what the, come on, man. Like what? It's just very interesting, honestly. And I was like, oh wow. I, I didn't realize like do and Z was a really big deal, but it, it, it really is. I had no idea. Strangers, people of authority, or just people that you have a professional relationship with. It really depends on the specific situation, but if it's not a child or someone you're close with, you usually don't use the informal address with them until you two allow each other to do so. Now, since police are people of authority and you speak to them in a professional context, you use the formal address with them, Z. And if you don't, and use do with them instead, that can actually be viewed as insulting an official. Beamtenbeleidigung, because it's disrespectful. Beamtenbeleidigung. Ah, beamtenbeleidigung. D beamtenbeleidigung. I'm pretty sure this is a word that I saw before that I'm like, is it beamtenbeleidigung? <laughs> Beamten. Beamten beleidigung, that makes sense. And you may have to pay 600 euros for it. The actual fines are decided on a case-to-case -case basis, but this is one number I found. I also found that showing a cop the finger gets you up to 4,000 euros. Listen, bro. There's just things you don't do to cops. Just don't be disrespectful. No matter what culture you're in, do not be disrespectful to cops, bro. This is coming from a dark chocolate fine young man don't do it <laughs> don't do it i've never even two entities i would never no matter how badly i hate them three actually i would never ever mess with my parents even though i don't have a good relationship the the cops i would never i don't care if they're spitting in my face and shitting in my mouth or something never disrespect them and the irs don't mess with the fucking irs Yes, my guy. So IRS, cops, and my parents. I, those are things I will never, ever, ever mess with, bro. Never. Because those three things can bite you in a way that you will never recover from. So live by those words and you'll be good. All right. <laughs> now, technically, insulting an official is just based on the general laws of not insulting others. There's no extra laws just about insulting officials. But I would assume that police enforce this much more than regular people do. So you should definitely be careful here. But also, I'm pretty sure that they would only enforce it if you obviously do it on purpose. And if they can tell that you're a non-native speaker and try to speak German with them and just make an honest mistake, I'm sure it's not a big deal. Cool. <laughs> I have come across a few more very interesting German laws, like the ones about beekeeping, but maybe I'll mention those in the future. Yeah, we're gonna talk about one law that I do not agree with, about wasps, man. Wasps! At some point, for now, what other funny, crazy, or just surprising German laws have you heard of? Feely, if you watch this by any chance, if you have time and you see this reaction, um, wasps. Why is it illegal to kill wasps? I'm so stuck on that. We need to exterminate wasps. They're not good for the environment. They're so, they're, oh, oh, oh my God. They're so, oh. My, my house has a bunch of wasps nests like around them and I have to keep spraying them annually because the wasps will go back and re- house themselves in those old nests and i try to knock them down too but it's like they like to build their nests in the same spot but apparently in germany if you kill wasps it's like a crime against humanity so i gotta please if you can please cover that in another video because i i i don't understand it maybe if you give some more insight i will probably understand why wasps need to be saved but we need to get rid of them damn wasps, man. Cause I, okay, I'll, I'll the context, right? I was watching a video from uh, Deanna and Phil and they were trying some bread from Germany and stuff like that. It was very cool. I loved it. I was having a great time until I saw that the bread bakery that they went to, which was outside, um, had a lot. And I, when I, I don't mean like one or two. It was like 30 or 40 wasps all over the bread. Like The bread was like coated in honey and nuts and whatever. All these wasps were crawling all over the bread. And I'm like, y'all are just eating that? Y'all don't care? And people were waiting in line like, cool, you know? And I'm like, no! 
What? No! If they sting you, then what? If I if I get stung and I smack a wasp and it dies, do I get fined? Like, imagine that. Up to $45,000, too. That's what, from what I heard. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's just my two cents. Sorry about that. <laughs> Share them with me and everyone else in the comments below. And, of course, I have been thinking about also making a video about the craziest laws in the U.S. I'm sure that many of you have heard some examples of that. You can own a fighter jet in Texas. That's one of the craziest laws in the U.S. Actually, I'm going to make a video on that, too, because why? Why? People can own fighter jets in Texas. So if you got, you got beef with someone at school, it's like, hey, man, listen, bro. You might not. You might want to take that back because I will come back to school with a fighter jet tomorrow. People are built different out here, man. Imagine you got school school shooters and then you got, you know, people that own attack uh, aircraft because you can in Texas. It's crazy because the U.S. does have some very interesting laws. So if you'd like to see a video about those, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and of course subscribe to my channel. So that yes, yes, yes. Let's do that. Hold on. Boom. Am I subscribed? I'm subscribed. Why well, hit that like button? Y'all go follow her, bro. She's almost at 300K. She's about to hit a million subscribers before me, bro. I literally am gr growing so slow. That's funny. Anyways, yeah, go follow her and all that good stuff. Well, 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 what a pleasure it is to see all of your beautiful faces at the end of this lovely video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sure you know, as I've mentioned in the past, we do have a Discord that's linked in the description down below, and we would love to have you a part of the world's greatest community ever. Bray Gang. Yes, if you've made it to this point in the video, you're officially a part of the community. So go ahead, join the Discord server. Link is in the description down below. And we also have other social media as well, like Instagram, Twitter. We're live. We, we go live on Twitch quite, quite often as well. So I, it would behoove you to, you know, go ahead and subscribe to the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash James Join the cause and be a part of the greatest, literally the greatest community ever okay it's simple just go ahead and do those little things we're trying to grow on all these little platforms and everything and it really means a lot now i know you guys stumbled up across the channel and you're like what does this guy post like what kind of content does he post reactions vlogs pretty much whatever comes to my mind all right it's random content i don't know what i'm gonna be posting 10 years from now but i do know that you can stick along for the journey and it really means a lot now for every single person that subscribes and follows all of the accounts that i have made and the, all the links will be in the description down below that's an automatic entry for any future giveaways i decide to have i'll remind you when the giveaways take place but you'll be surprised what i will be giving away because you guys have supported me so much up to this point and it's only right that i do the same thing back thank you guys so much for being amazing and i will see you in the next video take care peace